We are uh, one day away from boarding a group of students here in Key West, Florida, getting ready to sail with them into the Gulf of Mexico uh, on a five-week sea semester program. The ship has been here in Key West for about five days, and uh, that's what we typically do to try and do what we call a turnaround. There's some personnel change out. We have to reprovision the ship for food, take on water, take on fuel. We have additional scientific equipment coming on board for this cruise and uh, just general supplies and uh, maintenance on the vessel. So it's a, the turnaround is a pretty busy time for the crew. We're starting on May 14th, 2011, nearly a year after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And so we'll be going into the Gulf of Mexico for about two weeks to study uh, the various aspects of oceanography. Uh, we'll stop in Key West and then make our way back up through the Gulf Stream to Woods Hole. This is actually the first time that the Corth Kramer has sailed in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, this is a good time of year to be here. Uh, the weather is pretty harsh in the middle of the winter and it is oppressively hot in the middle of the summer. And so here in the you know, late spring, early summer is, uh, is a good time for us to be able to conduct some good science and still have the chance of doing some good sailing. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Would you be interested in learning where you're living? Yes, I would. <laughs> this program is entitled Energy and the Ocean Environment. And so that is incorporating uh, energy associated with petroleum, um, so fossil fuels and, and obviously related to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, but also focusing on the energy of marine organisms and the carbon cycle, as well as the energy of the ocean itself and the physical oceanography, the velocity of the currents and how much potential power can be derived from those currents. The ship that we're going to see on is called the Corworth Kramer. It was built by SEA in 1987. It's a 135 foot long steel ship, uh, two masts, we call it a brigantine rig. So that means that there are square sails on the foremast and no square sails on the main mast. Okay, so, so hands to the downhaul. Hands to the downhaul. And you guys should repeat every command hands that you hear. Hands, hands to the downhaul! The downhaul. <laughs> Don't all jump at once! Don't, don't do it. <laughs> the ship was purpose built to do our program, and so it's set up to have this company of people on board and has uh, endurance for about six weeks at sea, and that's what this program is designed for. You may not believe this, but you are about to embark on a journey to a foreign land, uh, a place that has a whole new language, a different set of customs, and a distinctly different way of being. You're here, and the journey has begun. You're not the first person to do this kind of a journey. Herman Melville once said, people who have never gone to sea as sailors cannot imagine how puzzling and confounding it is. It must be like going into a barbarous country where they speak a strange dialect, dress in strange clothes, and live in strange houses. Luckily for you, and maybe for Herman Melville, you don't go unaided into this wilderness. In fact, you have a lot of guides to help you. Our ultimate goal in the lab is to successfully you know, carry out this science plan and do your awesome research, as well as all of the awesome research that all the visiting scientists are bringing to us and um, learn something about the place that we're